What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Usually I talk about how to survive the penitentiary in jail and how to make it home safely to your loved ones, alright? But I'm going to slowly start integrating the law into my channel. I know it sounds boring, but some of this stuff people really need to know. And today I'm going to talk about should you take a breath test if a cop pulls you over and you're drunk, okay? There's a lot of things people don't even know. Should you take one if you're sober? You know, most cops say he can't be sober if he won't even take a simple test. You know what? But guess what? Those tests are designed for you to fail, my friends. They are. Those tests are very hard. A lot of those cops, let's say you watch cop shows, okay? And the cop pulls them over for a DUI and he says, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk in a straight line and then boom, they cut the scene. They cut the scene in half because they don't want to show the officer screwing up. The officers, completely sober, drinking coffee all day, eating donuts and stuff, can't even walk that straight line and then do a 360, 180, triple backflip. You know what I mean? It is designed to make you fail. Now, there's some tricks. Look, I've had one DUI, and I've had a great lawyers. I've had great lawyers, not all the time, but when it came to serious stuff. But um, these lawyers will tell you straight up, just like I'm telling you right now. Your chances, if you are drunk, okay, remember, there are DUI attorneys out there that you could pay money to, and they're beasts. They're, they are, uh, their expertise is getting people out of DUIs. That's what they do for a living. DUIs. They are experts at it, okay? And those experts will tell you, do not blow in that freaking breathalyzer. Your chances of beating a charge, DUI charge, are almost quadrupled if you were just to submit to the officer and blow in the breathalyzer. Now, as soon as you get that license in your hand from the DMV or whatever, uh, one of the laws in there is if a cop says, you know, they have suspicion that you're drunk, you have to submit to a breathalyzer and field test, okay? But you also have a right to deny it. And you can deny it, but your driver's license will be suspended for a year. Now, that's how they get people to follow the instructions. Automatic suspension up for a year. All right. Now, if you were to follow the cop's instructions, you're only going to, if you're found guilty for uh, DUI, okay, you'll still be able to keep your license through this little program while you're going to court. And you'll only get them suspended for first offense six months. So it's less of a charge. But you're also going to be paying a ton of fines, breathalyzer in your car, and your insurance is going to go up. So in my eyes, and you got a charge on your record, okay? In my eyes, I'm going to not blow in that breathalyzer. I don't care if my license is suspended for a year. I don't care. It's not going to mess up my. It's not going. It's going to raise my chances dramatically to beat it. It's not going to mess up any kind of job where I have to have a clean driving record. Um, I'm not going to get a ton of fines. I'm not going to get the breathalyzer in the car and all the other stuff. You know what I mean? But here's the thing, okay? Once you beat the, once you beat the charge, there's a lot of other stuff that, that you can do to get your license back. It is not going to be, it's called hardship license. You can get a hardship license, uh, you know, restricted or whatever. It's not gonna, it doesn't have to be suspended for a whole year. Trust me, there's other things you can do to get that back, at least for a, uh, you know, just driving to, to and from work. There's other procedures, and people don't understand this. Now, check it out. That's how they scare you into taking this. They think that people think that they have to take that fuel test. You don't. And the best attorneys out there is going to tell you, don't do it. That is facts. Okay, now check it out. Let's say you are completely sober. All right? Completely sober, like I was at one time. I, I passed the walking in line test, and he still wanted me to do a breathalyzer. I said, bro, I passed the test. He goes, uh, all right, well, do you mind submitting a breath test? I said, I don't care, man. Give me one. And I was sober. Well, guess what? That thing popped dirty like I was drunk, okay? It said I was drunk. I got arrested, went to the precinct, and then they did another field uh, little breath test at the one at the precinct, and I passed, flying colors. You know what I mean? I was about to ask him for a blood test. There's three tests. You can do the breath test out in the streets. You can do the breath test at the precinct, which is the one that is really accurate, or a blood test. All right, because a lot of people get arrested for a DUI and they're not even drunk. 
they might have just failed the test at, you know, sometimes people have blown in those breath tests and doesn't even read nothing. Five times in a row, won't read nothing. Then things are useless, man. For real. I mean, most of the time they work decent, but a lot of times they don't work as well as the other stuff, the blood test and one at the precinct. So that's how they do the backup. And if you're completely sober, you better ask for that blood test or else you're going to get DUI for nothing. That's right. You can get a blood test at your own expense in the precinct. Okay. Now check it out. Uh, that was one situation where I had to uh, wait and get arrested, go into precinct and do it, and then they released me. But uh, there's other things, okay, like the walking in a straight line, all right? Let's say you are walking in a straight line and you are drunk. Let's say you are drunk. Let's get to the root of the topic here. You're drunk. Cop pulls you over and says, hey, um, can you, uh, do you mind doing a field sobriety test, okay? This is the first thing you need to ask. If you are, if you know for a fact that you can pass the walking in line test, okay, if you know for a fact that you can pass it, if you've only had one beer, two beers, okay, and you know you'll probably blow drunk or over a .08 in the breathalyzer, but you want to do the field test, okay, you're walking in a straight line. You first ask the officer, is this being recorded on dash cam? Why? Why might you ask? Because if you pass that straight line test perfectly and the cop then asks you for a breathalyzer, look, they're only supposed to ask you to do breathalyzer if you fail that walking in a straight line test. But everyone, the cops don't ever tell you that, okay? The cops don't ever tell you, hey, if you pass it, we don't do a breathalyzer. They just say, can you do this? And then immediately, even if you pass it, they're gonna say, can I get a breath test? Immediately, even after you pass it. Now check it out, if you're drunk and you pass this freaking, they're not going to tell you you pass it, but if you know for a fact that you did everything that officer said in that walk in the straight line and he said he's recording that on dash cam, guess what? You don't have to take no breath test after that. You can refuse it. Take it to the courtroom in front of a jury. The jury's going to watch the videotape and they're going to say, there's no need for him to even have a breath test. He passed that with flying colors. Case dismissed. That's why you ask for the, make sure that the dash cam's being recorded. Now, if there is no dash cam, and he ain't got no, no cam on his vest, don't take either or. Don't, I'm telling you right now, do not take any of them, okay? Uh, it's best not to take any of them at all, because your chances, like I said, quadruple beaten in court. And why do they quadruple? Because attorney, okay, if you blow a breathalyzer, it's much harder to say, hey, he wasn't drunk. The breathalyzer was broke. Hey, he was using mouthwash. No, it ain't going to work. Judge, judge is going to find you guilty. All right? But if you refuse, guess what? It's all upon the officer's words. It's all about his credibility. And you know what? These DUI attorneys, they come in and they will eat that officer alive. They will eat him up. They will ask him the craziest freaking questions. And so, you know what? He says pretty much, you know, something to the point where case dismissed. It's much easier to argue a case that hasn't been found guilty. Like if you take a breathalyzer, you're pretty much guilty. It's much easier to fight and beat a charge of DUI if you don't take any of those tests. If it's like your second or third DUI, you better not take those tests. Get the best freaking attorney out there, and they are going to work their freaking magic. Just keep this, in, keep this in mind, okay? These DUI attorneys, they have a reputation to uphold. They want more people to come to them. They want their statistics to build just like your stats in a video game, okay? You don't want someone that always has guilties in their uh, jacket. They want someone that will... And this is another thing. These lawyers... Okay, I've had lawyers where they said, yeah, uh, I'm going to see what I can do. I'm, about, I'm having tea uh, with the judge for lunch. My attorney is going to go have tea and scrumpets with the freaking judge. These attorneys, okay, they, a lot of these attorneys, high-end attorneys, they know these judges personally. And they'll go up to them and say, hey, look out for me, man. I need this victory. You know, you don't think they don't do that? You don't think they do? They do, my friends, okay? 
The justice system is very funny. It's very tricky. There's loopholes and everything. You think an attorney, this is going to be another video, uh, court appointed versus uh, paid attorney. Very important. A lot of people might not watch it because a lot of stuff that people need to watch, they don't choose to watch it. they rather watch swoles being made. That's just life for you. You know what I mean? They don't want to learn the facts. And then when it comes to getting ID'd and all this other stuff, you don't even have to give that freaking ID if you're not being charged with something. You, see, you ever see these people on YouTube, they won't even roll down their window. They're like, uh, I'm not rolling down my window, I'm not getting out of my car, I don't have, you don't have the right to do that. What am I being charged with? Well, guess what? They are exercising their rights as a citizen. For real. They know their stuff. I, I love watching these videos on YouTube where they really talk to these cops and the cops are like, they don't even know what they're saying. They have no idea. This little pot smoking looking punk is smarter than he is. You know what I mean? And that is where a lot, you know, it's just very interesting to start learning about the law. And you never know when you're going to need it. And it's sad to say that a lot of people uh, that try to learn the law are actually the ones that break the crimes, that uh, break the law. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> they're trying to make sure they don't ever break the law again. But a lot of other people are just sick and tired of police harassing them. Okay? I've had multiple sobriety tests when I was completely sober. And I can probably guarantee it. That it was strictly because I've already had a DUI on my record. I've got violent charges. And that's another thing. They always call for backup before they even get out the car. Actually, lately, I've been up, pulled over twice. They didn't call for backup. I was, very, very, uh, I was very shocked by that. But usually, they call for backup before they even come to my car. You know what I mean? And I can always tell they always got their gun like in their hand a little bit on their, on their hip a little bit. Like they might have to pull it or something. I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, listen, listen to me. You can go and ask any attorney, all right? Any great attorney out there is going to say, if you are drunk, do not use, do not do the sobriety test. We will fight them in court in front of a jury, and I'm going to eat them alive. That's how they say it, you know? Of course, the cop's going to come in there and say, hey, yeah, his eyes were bloodshot, and his breath smelled like alcohol, and all this, you know what I mean? Of course he can, and that's what a lot of cops do. A lot of cops say, Oh, I, I, I had to smell the marijuana in the car, and there ain't no weed in the car. Never been to any weed in the car. That's freaking Christmas tree air fresheners. And they're saying that it smells like bud in the car. Nah. But that's how they get up in there. You know what I mean? Uh, if they ever ask me to search my car and I'm clean, I'm going to say, nah, I refuse. You know what I mean? Or I might, you know, it depends on what I got going on. You know, it depends on what I got going on. If I got to go somewhere, I'll just be like, hey, hurry up and do it. Do what you got to do. If I'm in an argumentative mood, hey, no. No. This is my car. I ain't do nothing. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, uh, a lot of, a lot of, just a lot of different things that, that there's a lot of tricks out there that people don't understand that they could duck, bob, and weave. You know what I mean? And I'm going to start diving into that a little more into this channel. But... Yeah, a lot of people, they're like, they just fall and submit to these officers' will, okay? They say, hey, do a breathalyzer, do, do the walking test. You ain't got to do it, my friends. You might get your license suspended and go to jail for two days, but hey, your chances of beating that charge are just greatly increased. Hope you all enjoyed this quick little video on whether or not you should blow into a breathalyzer uh, or a field sobriety test, whatever you want to call it. Look, I'm not telling you exactly what to do. I'm just telling you all what I would do and what an attorney would probably tell you to do, okay? But at the same time, it's all up to you. You know, if you want to follow the law, if you want to follow every word that is ever uh, told to you by the officer, commanded to you, uh, go ahead, be my guest. But, you know, sometimes you got to wake up and realize, you know, they are just people just like me and you they are officers and they do a lot of them do get paid by a quota okay i don't know if they still have it over here i think they got rid of it but they do have quotas and i don't know if any of y'all know what quotas are but it is they need a certain amount of rests every month why because it's money it's money and they want to make sure that they're doing something out there instead of just drinking coffee you know what i mean that is the facts of life. The judicial system, it works. You know, detectives, they find people that are getting 
<clears throat> murdered. I'm not totally against the justice system. I'm not totally against police. My brother's a police officer. I salute to you, big bro. I love you. He was on the news the other day, too, man. I can't show it to y'all, but he was on the news. Homicide, Jang. But, uh, you know, I'm not completely against the law and justice. But I do think, you know, it's a huge money-making business. Just like Griswold, man. My homeboy Grizzy. Facing 11. They want to give him 11 years for a Less than an eighth of weed just because it's his fourth violation and they go by a point system in the state of Virginia. Man minimum mandatory uh, sentencing just because of a point scale. Because of his past. They're, tr they're trying to give him a 11 clip. I mean, people get rape charges that don't even do that much. You know? When I see stuff like that, it makes me just sick. It makes me say, hey, you know what? The justice system is very uh, flawed, you know? It really is. And a lot of people are like, oh, these convicts, they just keep going in and out of prison. You'll be right back. Well, guess what? It ain't their fault all the freaking time, homeboy. It ain't their fault all the time, okay? It's the system. I beat the system. I beat it. I made it out of probation. I did, but I got violated twice, no, three times before I got out. Okay, and I'm here to tell you, in order for you to stay out of that system, you have to have a means of transportation, you have to have a job, you have to stay, uh, you have to not break any laws, stay drug free, okay? I mean, a lot of them are easy, but a lot of people, they have no one out there. You have to pay your fines. A lot of people can't find no job, whether it's fast food or not. They might have a rape charge, they might have... A robbery charge. No one's trying to hire anyone that's got a freaking strong arm robbery. And then not only that, you know, a lot of people, they just can't make it to the office in time. And if they don't make it to the probation office in time, they're going to, they're getting freaking violated. You know, some probation officers are lenient. Some are very strict and they don't give a damn. They're out there to lock you right back up. So when you see people going in and out of prison, it's not always the ex-con's fault. They're stuck in that spider web of a system. I tell you what, if it wasn't for my family, my parents in particular, driving me back and forth to that probation or my wife, uh, you know, I wouldn't know how I'd even get there. Back in the day, I was on probation. I, they didn't even have buses where I was living. I was living by the, a prison and uh, there was no buses that even came out there. I would have to walk like seven miles to the nearest bus stop. Oh, death ain't walking seven miles, my friend. One time I had to walk to a bus stop, and I didn't even end up taking a bus, but I saw someone, uh, this was a long time ago, but one time I was walking to a bus stop, and I didn't feel like walking no more, so I stole a kid's bike out of his front yard. <laughs> Rode that Jake straight to the bus stop, didn't even ride the bus. Left the bike at the bus stop and walked off with my homeboy. Got in his car. Gave someone a free bike. Rode it to the bus stop, though. I did that twice, actually. Uh, I remember, this is a funny story, man. I don't know how I got into the stories already, but this is a funny story. Check it out. Uh, I needed some bud, okay? I needed some bud badly. And I was, like, 21 when this happened. Okay, fresh out of prison. I was 21. And my ride, I went, I went to the club. I went to the club and I was just waste. I mean, uh, just wasted beyond. I, I honestly don't even remember a lot of it, but I do remember this part. Uh, I couldn't find my own boy left. Someone left or something or I dipped out. Usually when I start drinking, I just dip out throughout the whole ocean front and jump from bar to bar, club to club. And finally, I started getting really tipsy so I just left and I was calling him calling him calling him yeah, where, where are you going where are you going and I didn't have no credit cards or anything to get an uber I was fresh out of prison so I just started walking you know what I mean and then I was like god I wish I had me some bud you know what I mean I have no bud I had plenty of money on me though so what I did I knew my homeboy that uh, lived about seven miles from the ocean front you know maybe a little further and I was like, man, you know what? And it was on the way home. So I was like, I'm just going to walk this jank home, stay in the cut, make sure no cops see me walking late night. And I'm going to go get some bud on the way home. And I knew he'd be up. So uh, I'm walking down the street, and I didn't feel like walking no more. 
So I stole this little little girls. It was a little pink girls pink bike out their front yard, boy. I was pedaling in that jank, 21 years old, going to the to get some bud. <laughs> I'll never forget that one, boy. I'll never forget. And I left that jank right in the front of a Hardy's. Oh man, I wonder if they ever found it. Someone found it. You know what I mean? But I ganked that bike too. Whenever I don't feel like walking. I'm scoping. Where's a bike? I know someone's gonna leave a freaking bike out here somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I've done some crazy stuff in my time, man. Pink bike. Never forget it. Never forget it. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this uh, episode. Remember, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta follow all the procedures that you think you do when it comes to being uh, pulled over, ID'd, sobriety test. There's a lot of loopholes. Go ahead and research it. Google it. Might be some videos on YouTube about it. Great attorneys will tell you the same exact thing old Dr. Death did. Professor Death did. That's right, my friends. For real. So be looking forward to a little more of these uh, crazy charges or people getting pulled over. What you can and can't do for real, for real. It will open up your eyes. And the people that do watch this stuff, I'm telling you, you will be enlightened. And it might save your freaking life, for real. Anyways, until next time, don't forget to check out the links in the description. I got a whole new storefront for my merchandise, and I'm going to upload this vector file, try to get these hats going today. But I do have sweatshirts, girls' hoodies, uh, V-necks, long sleeves, regular crew necks, uh, girls' tank tops, uh, coffee mugs, totes, aprons, all that stuff under the link in the description. Go support your favorite YouTube channel and lock down that gear right now you know and i mean and check me out on twitch and be twitch playing on twitch day man my old lady was giving me a hard time yesterday because i want to play some video games man ladies okay ladies uh you know take it easy on your man you know what i mean and fellas sometimes you gotta snap out on your old lady i try to respect my old lady all the time i try to play the humble role a little the little punk role you know what i mean just let her talk let her run her mouth Every now and then you gotta be like, man, shut up! You got a bass on that jank. <laughs> and she'll be like, she be like da, da. Yeah, you gotta let them know who's boss sometimes, fellas. And don't mean to disrespect them. You don't disrespect them. You respect them all the time. But every now and then, you gotta get up in their face and drop that bass voice, dog. Until next time, man, I appreciate everyone who has supported this channel. Salute to every last one of y'all.